Hello there, and welcome to today's episode of the Easy EdTech Podcast. My name is Monica Burns, and I am so glad that you're here to join me today. If you want to make the most of education, technology, aka EdTech, while well, you are in the right place. My goal has always been to help make EdTech easier and give you ideas you can try yourself, share with a colleague, or bookmark for later in the school year. Every Tuesday here on the Easy EdTech podcast, you'll hear stories from my time in the classroom, the work I do now with schools and districts, and my travels to different EdTech events. Get ready for solo episodes where I share some quick tips and stories, and interviews full of practical ideas and stories from new guests each month. If we mention something you'd like to check out, make sure to click the link. You'll find it in the episode description or the summary area where you're listening to this podcast, or you can find every episode and all of the resources we mention by going to classtechtips.com slash podcast or by going to classtechtips.com and just clicking on the Easy Ed Tech podcast button at the top of the page. This episode is sponsored by my free weekly planner pages. I've created a downloadable set of planner pages for you that you can start using today. It's a great way to stay organized in the new year or anytime you like. Print them out to write in your daily schedule and tasks, or use the file on your tablet or computer to keep track of your to-do list and set your priorities each day. These planner pages are totally free, and you can find them at classtechtips.com slash planner. This week's episode is titled QR Code Hacks for Every Teacher. And I don't always use the word hack or, you know, cheat sheet or or something like that, but I've been watching or catching up on the HBO show Hacks. So maybe that's why I've got it in front of mind for me as I was crafting the title for today's episodes. But essentially, we're going to look at how to make the most of QR codes in Really any classroom. That's why this is for every teacher. So these are not subject area or age specific. These are really ones that are flexible for you. QR codes have become such an integral part of the way we navigate digital spaces. We've all spent time over the past few years scanning QR codes to access a form or a menu or to gather more information. These have been on the scene for a long time, but now they are much more, you know, part of our everyday workflow. And so you might use QR codes already in the work that you do in a classroom setting or with your colleagues. And I'm a big fan of QR codes. So that's why we're looking at this topic for today's episode. It's not the first time I've talked about QR codes on the blog. I've got a post all about like classroom door deck decorations with QR codes. I'll link out to another one with ways to use QR codes in your classroom library. So like oodles of resources on my site around this. But for today's podcast episode, I've got a roundup of just a handful of favorite tips, whether you're getting started, looking for a new idea, or just want to bring something back to your colleagues that might feel a little bit different. And I've added QR codes to print resources. I've created two. If you've got your hands on a copy of the new edition, the second edition of my book, EdTech Essentials, you'll see there's QR codes throughout it. It actually takes readers out to podcast episodes throughout the chapters. And my quick reference guide on using AI chatbots has a QR code with more resources. So I love them. And if you're using QR codes in your work this year, today's episode episode has a handful of things I think you should know about QR codes. Let's go ahead and dive into the list. First of all, QR codes are free. They can be generated at no cost using a variety of free tools. There are some QR code generators that charge a fee for extra features, like if you want to change the link to where your QR code goes a little bit later, but for the most part, 
the way I'm going to talk about using it, they're totally free. You can even create free QR codes in tools you might already use, like the quick action option in Adobe Express. So the first thing to remember is they are free. Next up, well, most cameras can scan QR codes, and this is a newer thing. In the past, you'd have to download a special app on your mobile device and scan a QR code with that app. Now, most smartphones and tablets come with a built-in camera that also is capable of scanning QR codes. So you don't need that separate app anymore. This means that students and families can access what's behind a QR code a lot quicker, a lot easier than they might have in the past. Now, another hack, and I kind of mentioned this when I said how some QR code generators are free and others aren't, is that you can change where a QR code goes. So dynamic QR codes allow educators or anyone to update the content that is linked to a QR code without actually changing the picture file or the QR code itself. This is super useful if you're maintaining resource list or maybe homework assignments or want to have one QR code that changes over the course of the school year. Typically, to make a dynamic QR code, you'd use a tool like maybe qrstuff.com and then you set up an account with that tool. You'd pay a fee over the course of a month and then you can log in whenever you want and say, I want to this QR code to now go somewhere else. So you're giving it a new URL or web link. Now, I'm always hesitant to recommend paying for tools, particularly when we know that QR codes, you can make them for free. But if you are someone who is sharing lots of resources, maybe really widely with your school community, or you have a budget as a media specialist or something like that, it may be worth considering since a great hack for QR codes is changing where they direct to. Another one that's on our list is using a colorful paper to print your QR codes on. Now you can print QR codes in different colors, but sometimes it gets a little funny with the contrast. If the ink is like really bright, but not bold there. It can be a little tricky, but printing QR codes on colorful paper is a great workaround. And this could be a strategy you use to organize resources too, like having one color signify a specific category or difficulty level. And you want to make sure the paper you choose is bright and bold, not dark. So there's still that contrast between the black ink of your printer and the paper. Another printing hack for QR codes is you can print them on sticker paper, like label papers. It's a great way to use QR codes creatively. Stickers could be placed on a textbook, a desk, around the classroom. You basically print it like you would on a piece of paper, but your paper would be labels instead. Then you can peel them off and stick them wherever you want. So that's one of my favorite hacks for using QR codes. Of course, you don't want them to be too small. Like you'd want to use like midsize or bigger labels and you can peel it off and put it on anything on that you want to great for um, things that might need labels or that there's a digital layer to the content. Now, in addition to scanning QR codes on paper, kids can also scan QR codes that are posted on a board, like an interactive whiteboard or screen. This may be something that's useful now, particularly for kids who might have a space they're in where you're changing like what's being displayed on the digital signage all the time. This is great for group activities where you want everyone to scan the same thing all at once once, or if your printer's being a little funky, you don't want to print something out like a QR code. This is another great option too, to get a resource from your screen onto the screens or devices of your students. Another one to consider is just how much more comfortable families are now with QR codes than they might've been just three or four years ago. 
Of course, that's a generalization. It might not be true of everyone. So you'll want to be mindful of introducing uh, this as a strategy for a group, but it is something that you might decide to share with families more often. So QR codes, like I mentioned at the beginning of this episode, have become just way more part of our daily lives. They might see them in restaurants or on flyers or posters. So if you notice that everyone's more comfortable with QR codes, you might leverage that. And you can use QR codes to share student work or maybe a class update with families, lots of options. Our next hack is that QR codes are great for bulletin boards. You want to make a little bit more interactive. I actually have a whole blog post. I mentioned it earlier all about that. I'll link to it in the show notes for this week. And QR codes can take a traditional bulletin board, one that might feel a little static, and make it way more interactive. And so lots of things that you might do here, you might link up to a video, to an audio clip or extra info that relates to that bulletin board's theme. You could take this in oodles of directions. Our next hack is to add a QR code to a flyer, kind of like you would add a picture file. So if you've made a flyer before, instead of adding an image or a picture, you can add a QR code in the same way. It's the same type of file, like a PNG or a JPEG flyer. I'll link out to a blog post, or if you're on my blog, it is just called how to put a QR code on a flyer, (laughs) and it'll take you there to all the steps to follow. But if you've made a flyer before, 